When I was your age, I had to ski 30 kilometers to go to school, said Hannah Kohonen, a research professor at the Finnish Meteorological Institute. Such memories and scenes may soon be a thing of the past. The Earth is approximately 33.98 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it was at the start of the Industrial Revolution. That warming has not been uniform, with some regions warming at a far greater pace. One such region is the Arctic. A new study shows that the Arctic has warmed nearly four times faster than the rest of the world over the past 43 years. This means the Arctic is, on average, around 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it was in 1980. Finland is one of the countries near the North Pole that has changed its climate in recent years. It is obvious that the winter in southern Finland has been warmer in recent years, and the amount of snowfall is also decreasing. Finland is not alone. With the intensification of climate warming, many countries near the Arctic frequently experience abnormally high temperatures. On July 4, 2019, the temperature at Anchorage International Airport in Alaska, USA, reached 90 degrees Fahrenheit, breaking a 50-year high temperature record. On June 20, 2020, the temperature in Verkoyansk, an Arctic town in northeastern Siberia, Russia, reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit, breaking the record for the highest temperature ever recorded in the Arctic Circle. In July this year, the temperature in the Arctic Circle soared to 90.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and scientists in the Arctic even played ice volleyball in short-sleeved shorts. This is alarming because the Arctic contains sensitive and delicately balanced climate components that, if pushed too hard, will respond with global consequences. But why is the Arctic warming so much faster? A large part of the explanation relates to sea ice. This is a thin layer of seawater, typically 1 to 5 meters thick, that freezes in winter and partially melts in the summer. The sea ice is covered in a bright layer of snow which reflects around 85% of incoming solar radiation back out to space. The opposite occurs in the open ocean. As the darkest natural surface on the planet, the ocean absorbs 90% of solar radiation. When covered with sea ice, the Arctic Ocean acts like a large reflective blanket, reducing the absorption of solar radiation. As the sea ice melts, absorption rates increase, resulting in a positive feedback loop where the rapid pace of ocean warming further amplifies sea ice melts, contributing to even faster ocean warming. This feedback loop is largely responsible for what is known as Arctic amplification, and is the explanation for why the Arctic is warming so much more than the rest of the planet. So is Arctic amplification underestimated? Numerical climate models have been used to quantify the magnitude of Arctic amplification. They typically estimate the amplification ratio to be about 2.5, meaning the Arctic is warming 2.5 times faster than the global average. Based on the observational record of surface temperatures over the last 43 years, the new study estimates the Arctic amplification rate to be about 4. Rarely do the climate models obtain values as high as that. This suggests the models may not fully capture the complete feedback loops responsible for Arctic amplification and may, as a consequence, underestimate future Arctic warming and the potential consequences that accompany that. So how concerned should we be? Besides sea ice, the Arctic contains other climate components that are extremely sensitive to warming. If pushed too hard, they will also have global consequences. One of those elements is permafrost, a now not so permanently frozen layer of the Earth's surface. As temperatures rise across the Arctic, the active layer, the topmost layer of soil that thaws each summer, deepens. This in turn increases biological activity in the active layer, resulting in the release of carbon into the atmosphere. Arctic permafrost contains enough carbon to raise global mean temperatures by more than 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Should permafrost thawing accelerate, there is the potential for a runaway positive feedback process, often referred to as the permafrost carbon time bomb. The release of previously stored carbon dioxide and methane will contribute to further Arctic warming, subsequently accelerating future permafrost thaw. A second Arctic component vulnerable to temperature rise is the Greenland ice sheet. As the largest ice mass in the northern hemisphere, it contains enough frozen ice to raise global sea levels by 7.4 meters if melted completely. When the amount of melting at the surface of an ice cap exceeds the rate of winter snow accumulation, it will lose mass faster than it gains any. When this threshold is exceeded, its surface lowers. This will quicken the pace of melting, because temperatures are higher at lower elevations. Nowhere is climate change more obvious than in the Arctic, and the Arctic helps to regulate the world's temperature. So as more Arctic ice melts, the warmer our world becomes. Melting ice speeds up climate change. Global warming is causing Arctic ice to melt. Ice reflects sunlight, while water absorbs it. 
When the Arctic ice melts, the oceans around absorb more sunlight and heat up, making the world warmer as a result. Sea levels are rising. Over the past century, the global average sea level has risen 4 to 8 inches. Melting Arctic ice is expected to speed up sea level rise. Some experts even estimate that the oceans will rise as much as 23 feet by 2100, which would flood major coastal cities and submerge some small island countries, causing untold devastation. But wait, there's oil in the Arctic. Even though there's oil in the Arctic Ocean, our dependence on oil is what's causing climate change in the first place. But that hasn't stopped big corporations like Shell and ExxonMobil from trying to exploit the Arctic. Burning more fossil fuels is the last thing we should be doing if we hope to prevent the worst effects of climate change. The good news is that there's still a chance to limit the damage. By preventing drilling, we can protect the Arctic for the millions of people and animals that call it home and stop fossil fuel companies from making climate change worse. Our planet is too precious to be exploited for corporate profits. Now, the real question is, what could we do to cool the Arctic? An obvious question, then, is whether there is any way we can halt the warming specifically in the Arctic. Fortunately, there are potential avenues for us to pursue, even if they are all unproven in practice. Idea number one, fill the skies with tiny particles. The first idea would be to release material, such as sulfur dioxide, into the stratosphere, which would cause small particles to form that would reflect more of the sun's energy back into space. With less solar radiation entering the lower parts of the atmosphere, the ground below would cool down. This process is known as stratospheric aerosol injection. Cooling the Earth with this method would involve getting sulfur dioxide up into the stratosphere at low latitudes. The material would then get distributed around the world by winds and gradually migrate towards the pole in the hemisphere into which it was released, thereby providing a reflective shield. If the release was applied to low latitudes in both hemispheres, then it would cool the whole Earth. However, if we wanted to just cool the Arctic, then the particles could be released closer to the region. The stratosphere also begins much lower down, about 9 kilometers at the North Pole, compared to 17 kilometers at the equator, so planes wouldn't have to fly so high. Idea number two, brighten the clouds. The second idea involves brightening clouds over the ocean in order to, again, reflect more of the sun's energy back into space. This is derived from the observation that, under certain conditions, particles ejected from the funnels of ships cause clouds to form over the ocean. Over land, there is plenty of dust and other tiny particles for clouds to first form around, but over the ocean, there is much less. Those clouds that do form over the ocean tend to do so around salt crystals left behind after droplets of sea spray evaporate in the air. However, the type of clouds which form depends on the size of the salt crystals. If the crystals are sufficiently small, then clouds are formed of lots of small droplets. This is important because clouds composed of smaller droplets appear whiter than those with larger droplets, and therefore reflect more sunlight, even if the clouds have the same total amount of water. Therefore, it may be possible to whiten clouds by creating more sea spray and more tiny droplets. This could be achieved near the Arctic through the deployment of boats with pumps and nozzles. So there are two ideas which could help preserve the Arctic and buy us time while we work incredibly hard to sort out the root cause of the problem, namely that the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is already too high, and we are currently making things even worse. However, both of these two ideas for halting the warming in the Arctic need a lot more focused research and development. This work needs to involve international groups, but especially those who are most affected by climate change and least able to adapt. This includes indigenous groups, not just in the Arctic, but those in other parts of the world whose countries even may not exist in the coming decades as sea levels continue to rise. Well, that's it from this video. What do you think about this new research about Arctic regions? Do you think this research is 100% correct? Share your thoughts by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and share this video with your friends to help spread awareness. Also, consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting videos every week.